diversity of climate and seasonal cycles resulted in a country with a diversity of food practices. Interregional variations can exist, but typically can be described as northern, southern, eastern, and western. It relies heavily on plant-based products, frequent use of yogurt, use of many fruits and vegetables, and small quantity of animal products, well known for using turmeric, curry, and herbs. Hi, my name is Vangana Shet. I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist and I'm of Indian descent. I was born and raised in India and I've been living in America, made this my home for the last almost three decades. So I'm proud to be an Indian American and I'm especially excited to talk to you a little bit about Indian cuisine. Now Indian cuisine is influenced by a very rich cultural heritage and traditions. When it comes to Indian food, it varies greatly among the different parts of India based on the region, on the climate, as well as the religious beliefs. About 75 to 80% of Indians are Hindus and at least half of them are vegetarians. When they are vegetarian, they may include dairy products, but they may or may not include eggs. When it comes to the cuisine, if you think about it broadly, just based on the region, you can divide Indian food into North Indian, South Indian, East and West. The predominant grain in the North is wheat. So you would find a lot of the flatbread called roti or chapati made from wheat flour. You may see millets used there. You may find a lot of beans and lentils. And also, this is where you find a lot of uh, foods that you may be familiar with from an Indian restaurant like paneer tikka, palak paneer, or chicken masala. These are dishes from the north of India. When you think about South Indian cuisine, rice is the predominant grain and the vegetable dishes are more dry, sauteed with spices. And when you have beans and lentils, they're more in the form of stew or soups that are used to enjoy with the rice grain. Um, from the East, you would find rice and fish as the common ingredients. Spices are still used here, but they're milder. And in the West, in one of the states, you will find more of a sweetness to the profile. So food would have that sweet, sour, and spice combination. Regardless of where you're from in India, food uses at least a few key components, just slightly differently in terms of met methods of preparation or how they are using the spices, they may be different. The key components of an Indian meal would be some kind of grain, whether it's wheat or rice-based or millet-based. It would include lots of beans and lentils. And in Hindi, the word is dal. Dal is the word for both the raw form as well as for the cooked form of the beans and split lentils. Lots of vegetables, colorful vegetables. And you would find um, spices. That is what really is the distinctive factor in Indian food. Some of the common spices found in an Indian home would be turmeric, coriander, cumin, um, red chili powder. You would find a spice called asafoetida, which adds a nice pungent aroma to food. You may find aromatics like cloves, cardamom, cinnamon. And there's nothing called curry powder or curry in an Indian home or Indian food traditionally. You may hear the word garam masala, and that is really the blend of spices. Masala is the word for mixture or spice mixture, and garam is hot or just the aroma of the spices that are used there. And each family has their own version of how they make spices. There is no one specific formula. And every home usually has some kind of spice container. This is mine. And I'm so sorry I tried to get Shadow, our dog, off screen, but he wanted to be part of this video. So I hope you enjoy my, my dog here. But these are the spices that I have in my kitchen. So if you can see the vibrant colors, there's turmeric, there's coriander and cumin, there's whole cumin seeds, red chili powder, fenugreek, and again, every family has their own version. When you think about Indian food, I want you to keep in mind that there is, again, a great variety in terms of how it's uh, served, how it's prepared. So it's important to identify 
each client or each person's unique preferences and how they make their foods. Know that traditionally Indian food is um, at homes is usually there's a breakfast meal, there's a lunch meal, there's an evening dinner meal, but also there's a tea time. And in the north, chai is often used as tea with milk, sugar, spices. And in the south, coffee is more common. And usually these drinks don't get served just by themselves, but with some snacks. These could be deep fried snacks. It could be fruit and nuts. So it depends on what your um, client is familiar with and what they enjoy. Again, if I had to sum up Indian food, I would say um, just know that there's great diversity um, depending on where they are from, depending on their family traditions and depending on the religion. There's usually some kind of grain. There's usually some kind of beans or lentil dish. There's lots of vegetables. There's often fermented products on the plate as well, like yogurt, buttermilk, or it could be a fermented batter made into some kind of dish. Lots of spices, but again, it's not necessarily as rich as you would find it in an Indian restaurant. So I hope this gives you an overview. And um, one last thing, Indian food is often eaten with your hands because it's a sensory experience. So often if you had the roti, you would tear off a piece and use that to scoop the vegetable or bean dish. And if it's in the south, the rice and lentil soup sambar would be mixed together and enjoyed with your fingers as well. And usually the right hand is what is used. When you visit an Indian home, there's a saying that says Atiti Devo Bhava in Sanskrit. What that means is a guest is like God. You are treated like a God, you're treated like royalty, and food is the way you show love. And celebrating and enjoying a meal with family and friends is part of the culture. Namaste. I hope you found this helpful.